hello as I've told you before I'm old I grew up in the 1960s which was an interesting time to grow up we felt very much in the shadow of the war World War II even though it had ended 20 years earlier the films and TV programs we watched were set in the war the comics I used to read featured commandos taking part in daring raids behind enemy lines Hull where I grew up still had a lot of bomb damage sites where children would play and rationing which carried on for some years after the war had only stopped a few years before I was born my best friend's dad I remember had been a conscientious objector in the war he was a bit of a local celebrity he'd been a stretcher bearer on the front line my mum and my aunt had been evacuated from London for several years during the war to avoid the bombing and my father-in-law joined the army at 18. Depending on whose story you believe, he may have lied about his age and joined when he was still 17. And he was captured by the German army a week or two before Dunkirk. And he spent the next five years in a prisoner of war camp. Five years from 1940 to 1945. And those years really marked him. He never fully recovered. Later in life, in his 80s, he was admitted to hospital and he was so upset and so fearful and we didn't really understand why but it was the first time he'd been in an institution since the war and when they brought him round his first meal to his hospital bed he broke down in tears because he'd been starving hungry for those five years and he wasn't used to being fed regularly so the war certainly cast a shadow over my generation 450,000 Britons died both soldiers and civilians. 30,000 civilians died in London alone in what's called the Blitz. My mum used to tell me about the V2 rockets towards the end of the war. You could hear the whine as they came overhead, but then the noise would cut out. And that's when you'd sit there in the silence, trembling with fear, wondering where the rocket would land. We grew up on those kinds of stories and stories of brave people fighting against an evil enemy. In some ways, World War II was straightforward to accept. There was a, a purpose. People felt they were fighting together against the evil of fascism, fighting for shared values and in the defense of freedom. And they were all in it together. Those are all myths, of course, but they're myths that many people bought into. And now we face our own historic challenge. In years to come, people write books about the COVID pandemic, make TV programs and films. You'll probably bore your grandchildren telling them all about it. In some ways, we have it easier than World War II. The pandemic will end hopefully after around a year, not, not six years. Fewer people will die and fewer young people, which is such a tragedy of war. And to some extent, we can swallow down the fear and get on with our lives not like when the bombs are raining down on you and yet we do have students and staff who are scared every day scared of an invisible killer that could be right there in front of you right now and we have an epidemic of poor mental health and anxiety students don't have the normal experience the usual opportunities and that's frustrating and annoying and upsetting in tough times, I tell people that the only thing we can do is to do our job. When you're uncertain, when you're scared, when you're unmotivated, just get on and do your job. And that's what our teachers have been doing. And that's what you are doing. Year 13s have A-levels to work towards. Year 12s have the all-important UCAS prediction exams in the summer. Working towards those sets of exams, that's your job. And I pay tribute to you for putting everything aside and getting on with it so well. And when you look back at this time and you bore your grandchildren with your recollections, you might say that you were lucky because the pandemic gave you the space and time to concentrate on your studies. And as a result, you did really well and you got A-levels that you are still proud of all these years later. And you were lucky because by the time you went to university, it was all over. 
and you were able to enjoy a normal student experience. And by the way, do you remember the fabulous summer of 2021? What a special time that was. Sometimes people ask me, students and parents, what does it mean to work hard? What do we expect? I know it's easy to kid yourself that you might be doing enough, although there might be a little voice at the back of your head worrying that you're not. So I thought it might be helpful to spell it out. You are, what, 16, 17, 18, some of you? In previous generations, you might be at work by now. Probably would have been, most of you. My father-in-law was a soldier at your age. You're not children. You're adults. How much work does an adult do? 35 or 40 hours a week is typical. You have 15 hours in the classroom, most of you. So another 20 or 25 hours a week is not unreasonable, is it? That's three hours a day, including weekends on average. And what should you be doing? Well, there's homework, preparing for the next lesson, maybe writing up notes from the last lesson, maybe doing revision summaries for chapters or topics that you've completed, going over every homework or piece of completed work to try and learn any lessons, how it could have been better. But the most important thing is to spend time on the topics or subtopics that you find most hard. If there's a technique or a concept that you haven't fully mastered, then focus in on that. Find extra reading or questions to practice it. Test yourself by doing past paper questions or writing essays or essay plans. It's fairly easy to find resources to do this. Your textbook, past papers, materials your teacher has made available or pointed you towards. There's lots online. But of course, you can always ask your teacher for more questions or resources. So just to finish, we have two and a half weeks left of term and then a holiday that we all deserve. After that, it's probably going to be tough for a couple of months. There may even be more lockdowns. But the vaccination programme will begin and the end will be in sight. We've all found that it isn't easy. It isn't easy to observe all the rules to keep going, to do the right thing. When I was young, people used to ask, what did you do in the war? Soon people will ask, what did you do in the pandemic? And I wonder, what will you tell them?